In this video, I'm going to show you some Desmos graphing calculator tips. Specifically, I'm going to look at Algebra 1 type tips um, for that align with um, the Virginia State Standards of Learning. So the stuff I'm going to talk about here is I'm going to talk about graphing equations and inequalities, substitution, systems of equations and inequalities, zeros, roots, solutions, x-intercepts, which is where y equals 0, f of x equals 0. And in part two of my video, because I can only upload 15-minute videos, I'm going to do um, regression as a short video separately, so that's why it's separated here. Um, so let's go ahead and look at some old SOL-type problems. So graphing equations is actually really easy in the Desmos calculator. It's actually easier than the um, graphing calculator, the TI graphing calculators, because the TI graphing calculators only graph functions. So you would have to put this in function form, which means solve it for y. Um, and you could do that, and if you're good at that, it's no big deal. But the nice thing about the Desmos calculator is that it will graph an equation in basically any form. So we can just graph it in this form, which is standard form. So let's go to the Desmos graphing calculator first. Let me show you how to get there. You're going to go to, if you're um, one of my students, you're going to go to LCPS Go and log in, I think. Mine's a little different because mine's obviously the teacher view. You're going to go to the math folder. You're going to see a few things in here. Um, I don't think you're going to see exactly the same stuff, but um, you're obviously not going to have this. The scientific calculators for math 6, math 7, math 8. So we're not going to worry about that. You could use that. This video is not really going to cover that. Um, the thing you're going to be using is the Desmos graphing calculator. So that's what you want to use. Um, if you can't get to it that way, if you're somebody else watching this video, you could always Google Desmos test, testing graphing calculator and then whatever state you're in. The reason I'm doing testing graphing calculator is because um, these are the functions that are available on the Desmos calculator when you're taking some kind of standardized test or what you're going to be ava available to you on the test. Um, it's different for different states. I know North Carolina, for instance, has, has its own. But um, I'm just going to work on Virginia. I'm going to go in through the app, which is right here. doesn't matter which one you use, so it looks like that. Here's our problem. So I want to graph that. To graph that, you're going to go ahead and just type this in. So that's basically all you do. So it's 4x plus 5y equals negative 20. So 4x plus 5y equals negative 20. Um, in the graphing calculators, there's a negative sign and a separate subtraction sign for um, Desmos. It's the same thing, which is nice. It, you'll notice that it graphs it, which is convenient. Um, this is how you turn the graph on and off. So if you just want this equation sitting here and you don't really want to see it right now, you can just click this toggle switch, which is cool. Um, let's see. It gives you a couple points. If I click on this, it'll keep the label on it. So the labels are negative 5, 0 and 0, negative 4. So all I have to do really is find which one has the same points, which would be um, answer choice A. Super easy. Inequalities aren't that much harder. The only difference is um, we have a funny symbol here, so we have less than or equal to here. Um, so it's slightly different. There's only one extra step. So 2 7 x minus 2. So let's try that. So you're going to type y. And the problem here is, and uh, my screencast isn't doing the whole screen, so I'm going to make this smaller. The problem here is uh, where is the key for less than or equal to? Well, if you go to this thing, which is the keypad, You'll see this right here. So here's all your symbols, and we're going to use this one. And then it was 2 sevenths x minus 2. To type in a fraction, you just type 2 divided by. The divided by symbol is where the question mark key is, 7. And then it's going to keep us in the denominator. That's why the it's uh, blinking right here in the denominator. You hit the right key on your keyboard to get out of there, and then we're going to put in x minus 2. If you put this x down here in the denominator, it's actually going to do 2 divided by 7x, which isn't the same as 2 sevenths x. Okay. Anyway, so it graphed it, you'll see. Um, it has a couple nice points. It looks like there's a nice point there at 7, 0, and a nice point here at 0, negative 2, and it's shaded down. So we're just going to look for the graph that has these two points, 0, negative 2, 7, 0, and shaded down. Well, we know it's shaded down, so instantly we can get rid of these two. So now we have a 50-50 shot. Negative 2, 0 is here, and 7, 0 is here, so that one's definitely not right. I think it looks like they tried to do it backwards, negative 7 and positive 2. So the answer here is going to be C. Pretty simple stuff. Substitution can be a little bit tricky, so make sure you're, uh, you're following along with me here. 
Um, this is probably the most tricky one on here besides regression. Um, so please just stay with me. If you lose me, feel free to pause the video or rewind it and watch it again. But uh, we're going to try this equation and put it in the Desmos. So we're going to go to Desmos and slide this over. I'm just going to type this in. So I'm going to click X on this to get rid of that. Negative 2. I'll click times. And then we need a cube root. That's going to be in this functions button right here. This is um, trig stuff. So if you're in Algebra 2 trig or um, geometry, you cover this a little bit. This would be good for you. Stats, you don't really need to worry about. We're not going to do any of this stuff in Algebra class anyway. And uh, I don't think you use it in geometry either. Um, this is combinations, permutations, factorials, standard deviation, standard deviation for population. Uh, I assume that's variance. Um, quartiles, median, min, max, um, mean might be helpful, but I wouldn't worry about any of this. We want in here, this is uh, least common multiple, greatest common denominator, modulus division. Not sure what all these do, I'm not sure what the round does, um, but the one we want is we're going to want this one, which is the nth root. We want to change that to cube root, so right here we want to put a 3 to make it a cube root, so whatever root it is, we're going to put 3. I'm going to click right to go under the radical and put A in the radicand. Click right to get out of that um, radical and out of the radicand, and we're going to turn it to plus B squared. And you can either hit this to square it, or you can hit um, shift 6, and that'll put you in the exponent and click 2. Now I'm stuck up there in the exponent. Technically, you should probably get yourself out of there by clicking the right arrow. Now, you'll notice some stuff popped up here. It says add slider. You can do this, or you can just type A equals B equals. Let's just add the sliders. So the cool thing about the sliders is I can just do this, and it will just tell me what the value of this um, algebraic expression is whenever A is whatever number I'm clicking here, which is kind of cool. I can do the same thing with B. I can change both of them. It doesn't matter. Um, notice it only goes up to 10, but you can change it if you click on that number. I'm not going to mess with that too much. So what I would do is I would just type in 64. And I would type in negative 5. And if you go up here, it gives you the output for that expression. Super easy. So the answer here is going to be 17. Done. All right, so here's the tricky parts, because you're probably wondering, why was that tricky? Well, um, the problem with Desmos is, let me make this a little bigger. Let me get rid of that. Okay, problem with Desmos is that if you, let's say instead of A and B, the formula actually said X and Y. So I'm going to do the same formula, but instead of A, it's going to be X. Instead of B, it's going to be Y. Um, it gives you an error here when you do that. It says, try adding an equal sign to turn this into an equation. It wants an equation because it thinks you want to graph it using X and Y coordinates because this is X axis, Y axis. So that's a problem. So watch what happens. If I do X equals 64, and I do um, y equals negative 5, it's not outputting that thing up here. So it's going to give you an issue. Now, there's two options you can do. You can either know to change this to some other variable, like a and b, for instance. That's what I would use. Or you can make this x sub 1. So just put, if you go by uh, beside this and uh, click and then put a 1 beside it, it's x sub 1, which means like a specific x coordinate, and change this to y sub 1 by putting a 1 beside it. Now, it kind of looks weird, y sub 1. This means y sub 1 squared. kind of looks a little kooky because the 2 is directly above the 1. That's a little weird. Um, but anyway, you can do the same thing down here and just change your sliders to x1 and y1, and then it instantly works. So that's fine. Um, so just know that x and y are going to give you errors, and that's kind of the error you're going to get. Um, another type of substitution that could give you some issue, or at least another thing I'll show you, is function form. So we're going to put this in, and we're going to do f of negative 8. So let's go ahead and put that in here. Let me make this smaller again. I'm going to get rid of these guys by clicking x, and I'm just going to retype. So f of x, and I just use parentheses for this, so that's the shift 9 and shift 0, equals 11, parentheses, x minus 24, divided by 2. Now, that didn't work out too well, because I just typed it straight like that. That doesn't look the same as this. So I'm going to back up, I'm going to close my parentheses, and now if I click divide by 2, you see how it puts it and it makes it exactly like this. So you got to be careful that they match up correctly. 
Um, if you run into trouble, just put parentheses around what you want the numerator to be and then parentheses around what you want the denominator to be until it works. Um, nice thing about this is um, the easy way to type this in, because I, remember I told you x usually doesn't work for this, but we do have an equation, so it should work. We're going to type um, negative 8. So this says f of negative 8, which means instead of f of x, they want f of negative 8, which means the function when you input negative 8 for x right here, like that. So to do that in Desmos, all you really have to do is type um, f of negative 8. And it gives you the output of negative 176. Easy. Okay. That's your answer. Now, there's going to be some problems that um, they ask for multiple um, outputs. So there's some problems that are going to say, like, the domain. They'll say the domain is, I don't know, let's pick some numbers. Let's just pick some easy ones. Let's say negative 1, 0, and 1. And they're going to say, find the range. Okay. So we're just going to use the same equation and use this domain. So I'm going to go back to here, and I'm going to get rid of this. Um, the cool thing you can do is, if you're typing in a lot of stuff, you can just enter a table. And here's how you put in the table. You hit the plus sign, and table. And it says x1, y1. This is going to be separate from this thing up here, but I just leave it there so I can see it. So I want domain or x values of negative 1, 0, and 1. So I'm going to type negative 1, enter, 0, enter, 1. Okay, now we want to know what the output is, and it doesn't automatically give it to you. I'm not sure if you can type in f of x. I haven't actually tried this. Let's see. I think that works. Okay, so let me make this bigger so we can all see it here. Okay, now this specifically says the input is x1. This is saying put x1 into this formula up here. So it's outputting all the correct stuff. So for instance, if I put negative 8, it should say negative 176 again. And it does. So that worked. The other thing you can do is if that's not working for you, you can just retype this equation. So you can just say, um, I think you can just put in 11 times the quantity x. And it has to be x1 because this says x1. Minus 24, parentheses, divided by 2. And it will give you the same output. So if you get stuck there, you can always just retype it in. Just be careful with the x1s. you got to put an x sub 1 or it's not going to work because it wants a specific x for x sub 1. Okay, So that's a really good um, feature of Desmos. you just got to remember these x sub 1s and y sub 1s and when they work. If not, it usually pops up with some kind of error until you do that. Um, let's see. Systems of equations are actually super easy. I'm just going to cover them really fast. It's basically just graphing two equations. So get rid of these. 2x plus 4y equals 22. 7x plus y equals 12. Okay. If you know anything about systems of equations, which you should already know about if you're watching this video, you know that um, to find the solution graphically, it's where the lines intersect. That's right here. Let's put a point there. So the answer is 1, 5. Super easy. Now, on the SOL, I think they're going to try and make it harder by um, giving you a word problem, and you would have to come up with these equations, and then it's easy to solve. So I think that's what they're going to try and do in the future. I don't actually know that. That's just my guess. Last one is finding roots. Roots are the same thing as um, um, zeros, solutions, or x-intercepts, which is when y is 0 or f of x equals 0. So to do that, also pretty simple. Get rid of these. We're just going to type in that formula here, this equation. So 3x squared, get out of the exponent by clicking right, plus 11x equals 20. Okay, so there are going to be the x-intercepts, which if you look, it kind of highlights them for you. Now this has a really low vertex, so I'm not even going to try and find it here. So let me just zoom in. Uh, here's one at negative 5, 0, and here's one at 1.3 repeating 0, which is the same as positive 4 thirds. So that would be answer choice D, easy. All right, so there's some things you can do in Desmos. I'm going to post another video. I think I'll just call it part two um, for regression because I'm going to run out of time here in a second. So go ahead and look at part two, and I'm going to show you some linear regression and um, quadratic regression, and you're going to need to know which one to use when. 
If you want to go back and look at some of this, feel free to pause it and rewind. Thanks.